what they did. Mm -hmm. Take a look at these mice, what you're going to see in a second. See, Tony, there on the right, you've got a mouse. You see he's kind of gray, the one yeah. on the right, yeah, and yeah. he's kind of balding a little bit. Yeah. And so he was not treated with this genetic engineering, but they did treat the one on the left. And so gray hair became dark again. Mm -hmm. uh, shrunk braids that had kind of shrunk with age, sort of de-shrunk, as it were. The ones, the old mice, their fertility was really plummeting. Their fertility was sort of born again after this uh, genetic treatment. Um, but we don't have a before and after. Uh, well, we you can kind of, that's not really a before and after, right. but you can kind of see the, the guy on the right is yes. old. The guy yes. on the left was old, but now was he's old. young. Okay. Right, okay. was old, but now We'll he's take your young. word for that. Yes, okay. <laughs> okay. So, that's, so that's basically what we're seeing right there. So I want to bring in Dr. Ronald Pino, mm. who's at the Dana-Farber Cancer Center, which is uh, affiliated with Harvard uh, Medical School, and he is going to talk to us about the incredible Terrific. things that he did. Dr. Pino, great to see you. Well, it's great to be here. Thank you for your interest. Oh, well, great. So have you found the Fountain of Youth? Well, what we've learned is that there is a point of return for even aged tissues, uh, that uh, tissues retain the remarkable capacity to rejuvenate if you remove the underlying cause of the aging, which in this case was excessive DNA damage uh, in the mice. And DNA damage is a major cause of aging. And essentially what we did in these mice was to have increased damage and then erase that damage. And we were expecting a, a, an attenuation, a slowing of the aging process. But what we saw, as you described in your lead, uh, a remarkable reversal of many of the signs and symptoms of aging. So, Dr. Pino, if I came to you and let's say I said, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm old, I'm 70 years old, and I want to look young again, I want to be fertile again, could you do it? Well, I think the implications are that if we understood the basic underpinnings of aging and were to alleviate that, that there would be the potential for uh, increased healthy living, whether or not there would be a significant reversal, a Ponce de Leon-like effect, I think remains to be determined. We have to keep in mind that in natural aging, there are many factors, many co-conspirators that cooperate to compromise the health of the individual. And so one would really need to understand all of those factors and reverse them in order to have the sorts of result that you're having. But again, it does teach us that there is a point of return even for fairly uh, degenerated uh, tissues. So you went in, Dr. Pino, and you messed with the very DNA of these mice. You went into their genes and played around with them. Is it even legit to do that on humans? Is it okay? Well, we're, we're not in the business of uh, genetically engineering humans, uh, but there may be pharmacological means by which one can uh, reactivate, re reawaken the gene that is responsible for repairing the DNA, particularly the DNA at the tips of chromosomes, which become frayed. This is an enzyme known as telomerase. And one could imagine that reawakening the telomerase enzyme, which is normally low or absent in our cells, could uh, reset uh, the clock, uh, the rejuvenative potential of our tissues. So do you plan on studying this in humans anytime soon? Well, I think that the uh, mice have been really outstanding in giving, illuminating the complexity of human biology. So I think these insights now give us a path towards trying to at least quell the type of damage at the tips of chromosomes that might impact on years of uh, healthy living uh, in humans in the years ahead. Okay, Dr. Pino, thank you so much. Exciting work and congratulations.